Today we'll take a look at how uh, Latex applications can improve the development experience when used in conjunction with Understand. So let's start and first create a Latex project. Uh, so we'll click on New Project and and select the uh, the module type that we are interested in since we are focused on C and C++ using understand we'll choose that as the module type from the list of all the different modules that we support and as an example we'll use the the fast grep uh, source code which is comes as part of an example within understand so I'll give this project a name call it fast grep and then navigate to where the the code is located uh, and I've already built the UDB file that's the that's the result of uh, understands analysis of the fast grep C and C++ code and let's select that so we'll we'll load in and create a latex project using an understand created UDB file uh, one more thing to remember about UDB files understands UDB file has changed significantly in 5.0 Latix supports both the old and the new version of uh, of understand and our documentation gives you the steps to do if you want to use Latix with the older version all right so let's go ahead and create a project and we'll take a look at the DSM that was created as a result all right so here it is it's a small project but we can see that uh, we can see that within the directory is a set of C and C++ files and I and and, our, and as you know I mean look clicking on any dependency you can look up what that dependency is what the line number is you can actually navigate to it so so right now when we look at the dependencies uh, the the list of uh, the files uh, is organized alphabetically uh, and so the dependencies at the moment tell you what they are but doesn't give us an architectural context and Latex has what's called partitioning to help you get a quick understanding of the, the architecture based on the dependencies so let's apply the component partitioner and you can see that it's split it up into four different parts what's interesting is that each part represented by a box doesn't have any dependencies on the box above it but has dependencies on the box below it so if you look at the file the header file at the very bottom you can see that lots of things depend on it which is what you would expect and if you see some of the application st level stuff that's on top and so what these boxes in effect represent is the layering uh, within this uh, with, of this piece of software and even though it's a small piece of software uh, virtually every large and small piece of software will reflect some kind of uh, an organization of the the files and at higher levels directories and uh, and all the way up you can see the the architecture in how the developers have have organized their code structure so we will let's make some rules about it um, and it's a uh, it's very easy to make rules and the rules that we'll make right now is to say that we'll enforce this layering now this is this came out of the component partition and I accepted it but uh, as as developers and as users of this you can specify your own set of subsystems and you can specify your own layering uh, rules so let, I'm going to simply go ahead and create a layering rule for the current uh, way that it's laid out and you can see that what has happened is that these little yellow triangles have showed up which says don't allow any dependencies on this to enforce that layering structure so in future for instance if a dependency a developer were to introduce a dependency from a library to an application it would end up showing up on one of those places where you have created a rule indicating that that's not allowed and you then would it would also be flagged as a violation and in fact I could make another set of layering rules I could take try.c timer.c and egrep.c and those are the three application level kinds of things which don't have any dependencies on each other 
and I could say, hey, make them independent subsystems. And that's again a very common software pattern which says that I have a common framework on which I've built a set of uh, uh, common components. Uh, so here, so what I've done now is I've made some some rules and uh, and we, we will uh, and, and then we will mimic the update of a project. Before I do that, I want to show you yet another view very quickly and then we'll come back to the update part. So let's take a look at the conceptual architecture view. And if you look at that conceptual architecture view, these are the layer lines in between the different layers. Uh, and you can change these change, and uh, this very simple drag and drop. You can move things around if you like. Uh, you can you can do and undo it. You can get rid of extra space if you have, or distribute the space. Really easy for you to edit and and do things uh, with it. And I'll leave you to when you try it out, uh, you can experiment with it. Uh, but let's go back to what I said earlier, which is our purpose is to actually illustrate in a development environment how you would use Understand and Latex. So let's uh, let's mimic this. Let's look at this file, regsub.c, and it's a file. It's got some subroutine, which is used by timer and egrep, uh, as you can see. And what we'll do is we'll change this file so that it now actually has a dependency on another file, which, uh, which it shouldn't. Um, so let's go ahead and go to the source file and I've configured the editor. Again, you can configure your editors in Latix, including configuring the understand editor. Um, and let's um, uh, go ahead and introduce some dependencies. And All right, and to keep, uh, keep things simple, I uh, actually have the things that I want to add in here. And so I'll just copy it and paste. And let's take a look at what I did. I added a, a dependency on a on a file called foo.edge. And in fact, this file doesn't even exist. Uh, but that's one of the, the values of using a parser like understand. Because even though it's, this file is not compilable, understand will still parse it and still be able to extract dependencies. And the other thing I did was to create a reference to an external um, da global data variable called tests, which I know exists in another file. Uh, and now what I want to do, the, the last thing I want to do is I want to not just create a reference, but actually I want to modify it. So I'm going to copy that and paste it here. And uh, I'm not so much, again, I'm not so much um, concerned with the with the correctness of the code, but in terms of being able to extract the relationships here. So, all right, so we're gonna save this. And now what we want is the new updated project that we see here uh, should reflect that dependency and should also show that since we have a rule, it should actually show the violation. So, and, and I could do all that updating from here, but instead let us now continue to mimic the development environment, the developer has made a change. As part of that change, it, it is now as part of our continuous integration, that change will be integrated, built, and tested. And so let's do that as well. So let's save the, uh, the, the project, uh, the, the Latix project, uh, along with its rules. So we'll We'll call it fgrep.ldz. That's the file that Latix produces. All right. So, so all right. So let's now um, run the uh, update the the UDB file that was generated by Understand, and then we will be able to be in a position to upgrade the LDZ file that Latix generates. So the first thing you'll do if you need to do this is to make sure your path is set correctly. Uh, so if you're, and and that's that's the path that you'd use. I already have it set, so I'm going to go ahead. And first step is to for me to now run understand. Um, so I'm running understand in command line mode, and I am updating the UDB file. It generated a bunch of warnings, and that's perfectly fine. 
the next step I, I'm going to do is to run the Latix command line utility for updating the project. So there it is. I'm going to copy it and paste it, paste the command. And by the way, notice that I'm also going to generate a report file. And so what, what, are, what we are, again, mimicking the development environment, the build has taken place. We have updated the build, and now not only do we want to know what the new project looks like, we also want to produce a report uh, which tells us what's changed, what's new, and uh, what, what might have gone missing or been, have been removed. All right, so let's take a look. So let's take a look at this, uh, at this report that we generated. All right, so you can see that we have generated a report called fastgrep.html. And we'll just double click on it so we can see. So look at this report and it shows you that there are zero missing atoms and atoms is Latix terminology for, for the specific domain. So atoms for C and C++ are files or methods or structures or classes and so on. And since we didn't change any, didn't create any, didn't uh, actually the missing atom so then since we didn't remove any file or remove any method there are no no missing atoms and we didn't introduce any new atoms either so there are no new atoms but notice that we did change one of the atoms was changed and that happens to be reg sub dot c which we changed and the chain it tells you what the change was well there was a declaration on line 26 there was a modify global on line 49 and even that foo.h which the file doesn't even exist so it's marked as unresolved uh, there is an include dependency so we can see all the changes that took place and now you can understand how Latix works which is or how how now you can understand how Latix and understand would work together developers can continue to work the way they've always done before uh, but every time a change is made as part of continuous integration. It's recompiled. The understand UDB file will be updated. The Latix project will be updated. And there it is. You would have a report if any new violations were changed or how things change from one build to another. Notice also that we had made some rules and and the rule now caught a violation. We, in, in fact, did not allow dependencies from reg sub dot c, a library onto an application level. Uh, and there it is. We have, we, when we created that dependency, it was flagged as a violation. And we can now see it visually to see what it would look like in the Latex uh, uh, graphical uh, interface. So what I'm gonna do is close this project and simply reopen it. That's that's all I need to do, just to confirm visually what has happened. We'll take a look at the DSM. Remembered all the rules that were created were remembered, but notice that that particular dependency is now flagged as a violation, and it's from reg sub dot c to timer dot c, and it's listed in violations. The architecture of software over time tends to erode. And that's a pretty common phenomenon that we see across a whole range of software. And sim it's simply because the people who know the architecture may be gone, or sometimes bug fixes are made. Are, are, are for bug fixes are are made. Uh, but if you can monitor your architecture, you can actually prevent this erosion of architecture. And it is the architecture erodes in small bits and the erosion becomes significant over a longer period of time, but you can actually catch it and prevent it from becoming a real problem in the future.